welcome to the Wednesday night service. Come on in and grab your hymn book, and we're going to start with a song you can sing 365 days a year. Hymn number 365, and 365, and so, how great thou art, and uh, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, boy, the more you think about the Lord, how amazing he is, 365, think of the words as you sing them with me tonight, now, oh Lord my God. you believe what you're singing tonight? Well, we had a great God, don't we? Hey, you need to think that who he is, and yet he would be mindful of us. The psalmist would, he would ask, hey, to think that God would be mindful of man. You ever think how much he thinks about you? How great he is, isn't he? On that second verse now, when through the words now boy we serve a great God and he's coming one day Amen. what if it's today Amen. praise the Lord right we're ready for him to come even so come quickly Lord Jesus and boy let him find us faithful when he comes right on that last now we Christ shall come And what a joy to be able to serve him. And uh, boy, to serve him together. What a good attendance on a Wednesday night. And uh, looking around, it almost looks like a Sunday morning in here. We got, we got one pew here and half a pew there. And uh, that, maybe a half a pew there. And uh, that's it. Oh, boy. That's a blessing, isn't it? Imagine one day pretty soon, right? If the Lord doesn't tarry, if the Lord tarries his coming and the Lord continues to bless you, imagine there's no room. There's no room. What are, you, what are we going to do, preacher? 
That's why we have extra room over here. We will open these doors and we'll make more room, right? And thank God for that. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for being here uh, on this Wednesday evening. And what a joy to meet in the house of God. And uh, let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessings upon tonight's service. And uh, we'll make a one public service announcement. This will be the only time I do this because I won't make it a, 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 a normal thing. You said, what do you mean? Uh, well, as of this evening, our camera is now working to where we can record. And if you miss the service... We're going to begin not only Brother Chad's uploading the audio of the sermon, but we're going to be able to upload the video of the entire service. So now that doesn't mean you stay home. Right? But it does mean you need to be on your good behavior because if you're not, we, we got proof. We got proof of what you're doing in church now. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's your public service announcement. But, hey, listen, don't, don't stay home. and just, Hey, when you have one of those days where you say, you know what, I think I'll just stay home. I'll wait till it's uploaded, and then I'll watch the service. That might be the service you need to be around the fellowship of God's people. And, listen, that might make or break your Christian life. And it's the service that you need most is the one you tend to miss. You ever notice that? So the key is, just don't miss. Just don't miss. And boy, glad that you're here tonight. Thank you for being in the Lord's house. Let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessings upon tonight's service. Brother DeVito, would you ask the Lord's blessings upon us? Yes. Well, you can be seated there. Let me give you just a few announcements, and including with the announcements, let me say to our men that were here Monday night for prayer meeting, thank you for being here. We had about 14 people here Monday night for prayer meeting, and uh, that's a blessing uh, to continue to watch that grow and to see uh, you men uh, take part in that, and I just want to wanna thank you for that. Uh, it is an encouragement when we come to pray, and the church shows up to pray with you. And so for all those men that have been here on Monday night just to, to watch that, there's been times where it was two or more gathered together, right? And there's other times where it was two or two or two or two or two or two or more are gathered together. And, and, and what a blessing. We had a, had a wonderful prayer meeting Monday night, and that's every Monday night uh, at 6 o'clock. And so if you have never attended one of those and you'd like to, I've had folks from other churches have, have contacted me and said, you know, do you mind if we show up? <laughs> no. Yeah, as a matter of fact, my goal was eventually just to have, I mean, boy, wouldn't it be amazing if men in Denton County that were in church would all pray together at a specific time and ask God to do something great? And uh, I've invited other pastors and, and other churches to come and, hey, come join us. Let's, let's get some uh, revival in our hearts. And, and uh, so, uh, so that's always uh, welcome for folks to come. Monday night, 6 o'clock. And uh, speaking of men, Friday, that's two days away. Boy, I, I'm, I'm feeling kind of awkward. I went up to Oklahoma last Saturday. I went to Oklahoma Tuesday. I'm going to Oklahoma on Friday. I've about had my taste of 35. And uh, I'm about done with that. And uh, if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll be like Brother Chad. I'll know exactly where the where the uh, DPS, you know, sits, you know, what locations they're at. I was traveling southbound on, uh, on Tuesday, maintaining proper speed, and, uh, but I was watching, and uh, as, as they, the traffic construction, they slowed it down to 55. And you know, on the other side of those, you know who likes to sit when they hit those construction zones like that, right? And sure enough, I, I said, I'm slowing down, I, and everybody was coming up on me, just, I mean, wanting to push me out of the way. It's one lane, I'm, I shall not be moved. There I was going down the lane, and sure enough, got up over the hill, and there he was. And I promise you, all the people behind me were grateful they were following the church van. 
Amen. And so, <laughs> what a blessing. So Friday, we're going to head up to Oklahoma one more time uh, for the men's advance, and we're looking forward to this time. Uh, I've had an opportunity to speak to others that have been up that way, and even some that were at uh, Heartland. We took the teenagers up to Heartland Baptist Bible College. Had a great day in college. They surely enjoyed waking up at 4 and 4.30 in the morning and, and uh, getting ready for school and riding uh, uh, two and a half hours to, to school, sit in three classes, take notes. And teenagers, let me just remind you, if you went, I want to see your notes on Sunday. Yeah, that's one, two, three. Yeah, Jacqueline was going, shh. And uh, I think it was Lexi in the nursery. And uh, Lexi, if you're in the nursery, I know you can hear me now. I want to see your notes on Sunday. So I want to see what kind of notes you took in Bible college. So, uh, some classes we sat in, they were doing final reviews, and, and the teenagers were like, we had the whole semester in one class. I said, no, you just got what they needed to know for the test in one class. There's a whole lot more that you learn. And so uh, one of those classes was, uh, was, Trey, what was it, pastoral counseling? Something like that? Introduction to pastoral counseling. He looked at me, and the professor had, uh, uh, Brother Jet had a notebook that literally sat off his pulpit like that tall, and he was flipping through. I mean, flipping and flipping and flipping, and Trey's looking at that going, that's the notebook? And I said, that's just the beginning. <laughs> He's like, oh, wow. But he felt like after that, at the end of uh, the class period, he, he felt like he'd be able to, uh, now he's, he's licensed to counsel, he says, and uh, he says he's going to begin to take over that so I won't have to, so free up, you know, get Olivia to start doing the data entry, get Trey to start doing the counseling, and the church will go downhill from there. <laughs> so we had a good time, though, uh, up, at the, up at college, and we did enjoy that. Uh, we talked to some folks that are going to the men's advance, and, and they said, hey, listen, it is outstanding. And so uh, I know it's, it's Wednesday night. Uh, I think you can still sign up to go with us. We're leaving Friday at 1 o'clock, and if you'd like to go with us, I think the cost is $75 for late registration, plus there's a cost for lodging. We, we can try to figure all that out. If you don't want to pay for lodging, there is area for tent. And uh, you, can, you can pitch a tent, yeah, and it could have some storms. So it could be a very exciting uh, men's advance. Brother Chad? It closes tomorrow. Okay, I did not know that. So thank you for letting me know that. So you have one day left, one day left. And so if you'd like to go, the rest of us men that are going, 1 o'clock Friday, we'll head out. And uh, somewhere between here and Stillwater, we're going to stop and have lunch together. And, uh, you know, that's always a good thing to be able to sit down. I remember times where uh, uh, Dr. Smith and the church there, they, they went on a hunting trip down at the same place where they camped, spent summer camp at Pot of Gold Youth Ranch in Comfort. And so uh, every year they, uh, a few, few of them would go. And one of the highlights has been able to just even sit at a water burger with Dr. Smith and listen to him tell stories. Now, we don't have Dr. Smith going with us, so I'm, I'm sorry for that. You'll just have to put up with me. And, uh, but but I, I enjoy listening to you. Some of you tell the stories, hey, things that you've been through, things that you've endured in life, right? Things that maybe you're enduring now. It happens. Hey, you, the more you get to know somebody, the more you can pray for them, right? And the more you can care about them. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> and so, in case you didn't know, Brother Winkle's going as well. And so, okay, wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad, I'll be glad to see him up there. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, I thought you were going to say more. Sorry about that. So, Friday at 1 o'clock, we'll leave. You said, what time are we getting back? Yes. We will get back, if the Lord, Lord allows, Saturday, sometimes Saturday evening, and so looking forward to that. Sunday, this coming Sunday, is our fifth Sunday fellowship, and so Sunday, April 30th, make sure to bring enough dinner for, uh, for your family and one or two guests, and we'll eat together, and, and, and this will be not only our fifth Sunday fellowship, it'll be our last fifth Sunday fellowship. Because in June, we'll do the first Sunday fellowship. And uh, so begin to eat, yay, and there was rejoicing. <laughs> So, and uh, Saturday, May 6th, so that you're aware, Saturday, May 6th will be the uh, family Saturday, so there'll be no organized soul winning on that Saturday, but don't get too confused. Don't think, wait a minute, family Saturday, that May 6th, so food day, May 7th. No, there won't be a food day, May 7th, because we just had it on April 30th, and so eventually we'll get that calendar all straightened out for you. You'll be able to, to, to do things out of habit once again. So looking forward to these things going on. And teenagers, just kind of uh, just kind of remember, remind you of one other thing. Third Saturday in May, be youth rally in Decatur. 
Third Saturday in May, so Youth Rally in Decatur. That one will cost you $5. We had a good time. This one didn't cost us anything. And uh, we were one of the larger youth groups, and so that was something different for us. But uh, this other one we go to, hey, we're one of the smaller youth groups, and it costs you $5. And so uh, that's just the way it goes. So uh, third Saturday in uh, May, and we'll head it out at 1.30, head out to Decatur. Well, take a hymn book now, hymn number 507. Here's an old hymn. Uh, used to be sung quite often by others when singing it. Well, thank God for that fount of many blessings, right? Hymn number 507. Let me hear you tonight now. Come thou fount of precious fount flowed for you and I. Well, let's get around and shake hands and welcome those who are here and we'll sing those next two verses together.
And boy, how true that third verse is, isn't it? Boy, my heart tends to wonder. So God help me, protect me, keep me from wondering. And uh, what, a, what a joy to sing that unto the Lord. Well, it's offering time now. And also a joy to be able to give unto the Lord and uh, watch him to bless. Uh, the psalmist says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor begging bread. Yeah. Right? right? And I don't know how many of you on your own testimony to me personally have said, you know what? I tried this, this giving thing to God and what has blown my mind? Yeah. How, how and what God does. And uh, boy, so the more you think about that, the more of a joy it is to give unto the Lord, right? And the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Now, we don't give to get. That's not what we give because we love Him. Amen. So even if we didn't get, we still give. Amen. And what a joy to be able to give unto the Lord. Let's pray. I ask the Lord's blessings upon our offering tonight. I was uh, looking, trying to make some preparation to be able to upload our videos uh, online and found a video of Trey preaching his very first sermon. <laughs> Yes, and so at that time now he 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 stands about here well here now and uh, when his hair's wet it gets a little shorter and uh, but at that time when he was preaching he was here things have changed in a few years and uh, what a joy he preaches a lot better than he did that first one too and uh, but you know you should you should right and uh, mama says he was cuter then though. <laughs> Trey, would you ask the Lord to bless our offering, please? says there's two things you don't rush an invitation and offering and the usher was back there digging in his pocket so he can put it something in the offering so we want to make sure you give him time to do so well anybody have any answers to prayer this week any answers to prayer miss dotty amen and by the way um many don't know what that is i was praying with them specifically about about the need and it was it's very huge unspoken it as a matter of fact there were folks that told us it was probably impossible is what I'd heard and uh, so but what's impossible with man is possible with God and so it, it was very very amazing so I, I was just rejoicing uh, I was on the phone uh, I don't remember who I was talking to I think it was it was last it was last night you got the word and so last night I was on the phone boy uh, Yesterday, up at Hartland, my, my phone was just blown up. I had about eight to ten text messages after chapel and trying to respond and to coordinate and do this and that and phone calls and voicemails and, and uh, was just taking care of all those things. And so and it, it lasted all the way to about 10 o'clock uh, last night. And so I was on the phone and didn't even know that a text message come through and uh, hung up the phone. Oh, now I, now I got a text and checked that and saw Brother Gordon's text and I was just rejoicing. And how how good God is that what a blessing that is. Miss Lee? Well, I just wanted to give a testimony to the fact that when you do when you're a teacher and you give to the Lord, you can give it to God. Mm -hmm. says to pray, and I did it Amen. May not always to pray and not to faint, right? Yes it yes it is. And mine is too. And uh so and praise the Lord for answered prayer. And that's a blessing. Anybody else answer prayer this week? Miss Nancy. Amen. Glad to see. Yeah. <laughs> so glad to see you all here. And uh, it's a blessing. It's pretty exciting to see, you know, you all sitting together, Gary and Shay, on Sunday. And uh, it's a blessing. It stirs my heart. And so I uh, sure love you all and glad that you all are here. Amen. Miss Kretzinger.
don't really know she didn't even ask for Yeah, sure. Good. Better than a heart attack, for sure. That is, uh, I'll take some medication over a heart attack any day, and uh, as much as I hate medication, but praise the Lord for that. Glad he's doing better. Is he back home now already? Or okay. Yeah, I understand. The Kretzinger's dealing with some allergy issues, and of course, many of us understand that as those. That front comes through from the north, it brings in a lot of stuff, doesn't it? And then the ones come from the south and bring other stuff. And it, that's, uh, I get them from both ends, and uh, it's, it's a mess. North and south. Come on, y'all. <laughs> wow, yeah. Leave it. Uh, I would talk to you as though you were spiritual, but I could not, for ye are carnal. <laughs> wow. What a blessing, yeah. Anybody else had answered prayer? <laughs> and uh, all right, none other answered prayer. And hey, we safely made it to Oklahoma and back, of course, on Tuesday. Uh, that was a, uh, a blessing. H had an opportunity to, to sit down with Brother Copes, the vice president of the college, and, and ask him some I'm always asking him some questions and, and just checking, hey, uh, you know, just, it, it, no, he, he always answers greatly. And so uh, always investigating and checking things out. And uh, so a uh, blessing to be able to do that. And so, uh, we thank God for the safe travels. I ask that you have these prayer needs to, uh, to your to your list. Uh, Miss Lee has asked that we had been uh, we've been praying for her cousin Debbie Rhodes, and uh, for those that don't know all the details, uh, she she had that uh, infection in her brain and the swelling was so much they had to take off part of her skull. Well, they finally have got to a place where they can put the skull back on tomorrow, and uh, now ask, she's asking that you pray for that. But then also, it's kind of a catch-22. Uh, she's got some blood clots in each leg, and so trying to take care of that. Also needing to give her to the blood thinners, but they can't because the skull's not on, so they got to put the skull, you know what I'm saying? And so everything has a but, but, but. And so uh, she still still needs a lot of prayer. Uh, so if you'd pray for Miss Debbie Rhodes as she goes through that surgery tomorrow, and pray for those blood clots, that uh, the Lord would help dissipate those um, and allow them to be able to give her correct treatment. Uh, Miss Mitzi asked that we uh, remember Bambi Barnes, and for those that don't remember, she was on our prayer list for quite some time with cancer, and uh, and that was uh, a great struggle for her. Well, the cancer's now on her liver, and so uh, they did a CT today to see if they were able to operate or not, and so if you'll add her to the prayer list and uh, be in prayer for Bambi Barnes and his liver cancer. And then an update, uh, she said here, Mandy Miller is cancer-free. And so praise the Lord for that. And that's always a blessing. And then uh, at church, I want you to pray for us as we head to Oklahoma on Friday. Pray, pray for safe travels. And, and uh, our desire for the, the men that are going, I, I, I know each of their heart is not that we just go have a good time together, but God speaks to our hearts. And uh, the desire uh, of the men going is for sure is not just a time away, but a time for God to convict us and strengthen us and increase our faith and, and just give us what we need so we can come home and, and do better. And we all need to do better, don't we? And so, uh, so that's our prayer and our desire. So if you'd be in prayer for us as we head to the men's retreat uh, on Friday afternoon and then the uh, storms that's supposed to pass through. Uh, I, I was talking to some students in, in Oklahoma City uh, about Texas weather and, and of course the front that was coming through on Tuesday and, and bringing severe storms and brought some some serious storms in Oklahoma because if those of you pay attention to the weather here they got that that we have that cap that suppresses storms in the DFW area all the way down into South Texas and uh, they don't have that and we're headed north and a front's supposed to come with a low and storms so pray for the weather as well, that this stuff will just pass on through and uh, God will give us safety uh, while, we're, while we're gone. And then at church, I want you to pray for one of the need. Many of you have uh, noticed Brother Tim here and you've asked, well, why is Brother Tim here? He's supposed to have surgery today. You can tell his back is not fixed. He's hurting. He went yesterday for an oncology visit and the PSA levels in his blood were not correct. And so they did some more scans and uh, the cancer that they operated on is gone, but now he has more cancer. 
and so they can't do the back surgery until the cancer's gone. And so if you'd pray for him, uh, it's, they've got him on medication that might be able to help some of it, but it's possibly the doctor thinks he's going to have to have some of it removed again. That's two surgeries to have to pay for and, and a great expense. And uh, so he's, he's uh, you know, fighting, trying to keep his head up, trying to keep trusting God. And we're just trusting God he's going to answer our prayer. And so pray for Brother Tim. Uh, you know, just a joy to be able to, to get to know him uh, through the months that he's been here and uh, be able to pray for him. Uh, it's exciting to see what God did the first time. And I'm looking forward to him to do it again. And so uh, I really trust that God can. And uh, but Brother Tim and I have talked, and we said, but if not, right? We're going to trust God, but if not. Remember the Hebrew children? That's what they said. But if not, let it be known this day. Hey, we're not bowing. We're going to keep trusting God, right? And one way or the other, God's going to take care of it. And so we're just going to trust the Lord and, and uh, ask that you be in prayer for him. Pray for his back. He, he's in severe pain. And the work that he does, it, need, he needs his back. So it makes it difficult. And so pray that this cancer, we can, God will just get rid of it. So he can go ahead and have the back surgery and then continue doing what he needs to do. And so if you'd be in prayer for him. Brother Forrest, Brother Tim, Brother Forrest back here knows what it's like to struggle with your back. He's had about three or four surgeries. Four neck surgeries. And so I felt bad. I was there with him the last neck surgery. And uh, he was coming through recovery. And uh, just being me, I started making him laugh. And he started laughing. And, oh, oh, and, oh, I'm sorry. And, uh, and yeah. Brother, yeah, the third one I was. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, there's there's certain individuals I can get in trouble with pretty quickly and easily. And uh, we, Brother Forrest was in there getting checked in the hospital, and the nurse come in and asked him his name, and I said, Joseph Smith. And she looked at her paperwork, and she looked up at him, and, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I should let him answer that. And he, he just looked at her, and she's... <laughs> We almost got kicked out. <laughs> so, well, what a joy. So if you take these prayer needs and uh, add them to, uh, to your prayer list, if you will. And, uh, boy, just looking forward to seeing how God will intervene on behalf of these needs. And he's, he's done it, and he'll continue to do it. And we thank God for the ability to pray and uh, come unto the Lord. Well, take your hymn book now. Let's see another song, hymn number 272. I'm on the winning side, and uh, hadn't sung this one in a while. But uh, thank God we're on the winning side, right? And uh, so glad that you're here tonight. 272. Grab your hymn book and sing as though you're on the winning side and not like, like you're defeated, right? So 272. Once I dream, I'll see that no more will join me feet. And my soul is put in down with pride. Then my Savior came along and he showed me I was born.
glad you're on the winning side. Amen. You can be seated and thank the Lord for that. I don't know where, since I don't update it anymore, I have to look for where things are at whenever they get updated. And so I don't see it on there, but it, it, Olivia may have uh, put it on there somewhere. She's not in here, is she? She's in the nursery. All right. Just in case I'm missing it, and uh, in the case she missed my notes, I ask that you pray as, as well for, for Megan. Uh, she's having some tests that are run, and uh, if you'd be in prayer for her health. And uh, so just add that to your prayer list as well uh, tonight. And uh, I'm so glad that she's here. And just going through some, you know, some health issues and running some tests, and about having a good spirit. And so we're grateful for that. And so I... Uh, I don't see that written down there, so possibly possibly she put it in there somewhere, or possibly she couldn't read by handwriting, one of the two, and uh, so that is an uh, opportunity there. Well, take your Bible tonight to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to finish chapter 2 tonight, and uh, that is my goal. Yeah. That is my goal, to finish chapter 2 tonight. And as we do our, our study through the book of Philippians, boy, how, how wonderful it's been to kind of just see what God's done. And, you know, one of the great things in doing a Bible study and, and learning these things is not just learning the content so you can have a head knowledge of it, but the opportunity to take it and apply it to your life. That's, that's one of the joys is, you know what, we begin to take the Word of God and we begin to break it down in such a way that, listen, now I kind of understand, I see the whole picture that, that the Lord has given to me so I can apply it to my life. And, and I hope that as we've been doing this study, listen, it, 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 it was one of the things that as, as we prayed about what, to, uh, what Bible uh, uh, book to go through on Wednesday nights, what book to begin to study again. And, uh, you know, I had no idea what 2017 would hold whenever we would begin to... Be, uh, study the book of Philippians. But I know this, some of you have gone through great struggles already this year. And one of the things that you need as you go through struggles is the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. On Monday night we were talking and, and one of you men even brought up the verse in Scripture as we went through the book of Proverbs or, or, or Proverbs 24. And listen, uh, where the Bible says if you quit in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now, last time I checked, God's strength is never small. And so if the joy of the Lord is my strength, then, then listen, there means that no matter what I go through, I don't have to quit. And that's why Jesus would say, listen, men ought always to pray and not to faint. We talked a little, a little bit about that last uh, Sunday night. And you know what? Sometimes maybe this year you've already taken some of the stuff that we're learning from the book of Philippians. I hope you've been applying it to your life. I hope you've been trying to live according to these principles, live according to the things you're learning. That way you might have joy. Joy. We've been talking in chapter 2 about some examples that Paul has given us of men that understood a submissive mind. And uh, can I just remind you that in chapter 2 we're talking about that submissive mind. And some already just think, listen, that those two words, submissive mind, uh, combined with joy, that, that's like an oxymoron. That They just don't fit. How, how does submission of the mind, how does that ever produce joy? Well, can I say, listen, God, Paul has given us examples of those who submitted in their mind. And listen, because their mind was submitted, their outward man was submitted, and they had joy. Anybody remember who the first example we talked about was? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Hey, that's one of the times when the kids can say that, and they're right. Right? Hey, did Jesus have any joy? Did he have any sorrows? Yes. yes. But he had joy. second example we talked about was? Paul. Paul. Did Paul have any joy? Yeah, he sure did. Hey, did Paul have any difficulties? Yes. Anybody want to go through what Paul went through? 
Listen, he's not the son of God, right? We're not talking about, listen, sometimes we get the mindset, well, Jesus can do it because he's God. No, he was just as much man as though he was never God. He endured it just the same way you and I would have had to endure it. He put himself under the submission of flesh, and yet he endured it. And to, to wipe away that mentality, listen, he gave us a man as an example by the name of Paul who also endured great scourgings and great difficulties and great sorrows. And oftentimes we say, well, Paul could do it because he was just that good of a Christian. He gave us a third example. Who was that? Timotheus. Timothy or Timotheus, right? Timothy, listen, this great servant of God, and listen, maybe, maybe in your mind you say, I can't be, I, I try to be like Jesus, but I just haven't got that down yet. Uh, I try to be like Paul, but you know, I just don't know if I can ever reach that level. Maybe you could just be a Timothy. Just be a servant. Of course, that's a good name too, isn't it, Brother Tim? Just be a Timothy. And then our last example was? Epaphroditus. And so let's read a little bit more about Epaphroditus and, and then we will uh, finish up uh, chapter 2. So Philippians chapter 2, if you'll stand with me, if you are able. And, uh, and let's look into God's word beginning in verse 25. Paul says, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that you heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when you see him again you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in, in, uh, in reputation. Because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. Let's look at this last example tonight and uh, finish up chapter 2 and discussing the submissive mind, an example of one who did, had that, the man named Epaphroditus. Lord, I pray you'd help us once again tonight, and we thank you so much for your goodness. Uh, Lord, you have been evident in service upon service upon service. Lord, in prayer meetings, in our Sunday school hour. And God, we thank you. We don't deserve your presence. And to think that a holy God would spend time with us, even amongst all our sin. Would you cleanse us tonight? Would you cover us in the blood of Christ? Holy Spirit of God, would you help us to open our hearts and submit our minds to you that we might learn how to be the same type of individuals, Lord, that we've been talking about. Men and women of God who have a submissive mind, not submissive to the pastor, not just submissive to each other, Lord, ultimately just submissive to you. Help us and speak to our hearts tonight. Use the message to stir us to, Lord, make the changes in our life that we need to, that we might honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you weren't here last week, we talked about Paul's description of the man named Epaphroditus, which we don't have a lot of detail in Scripture. We told you that Paul said, mentioned that he was a brother, or hey, just kind of re remembering what he talked about in chapter 1, he had the fellowship of the gospel. We told you that Paul said he was a companion and laborer, also in chapter 1, talking about the furtherance of the gospel. We told you that he, Paul said he was also a fellow soldier. Uh, he, listen, chapter 1 talked about the faith of the gospel. Listen, this man had all of those, and, and the word we used to describe that, the fact that he had all these in his life, was the fact that Epaphroditus was a a balanced Christian. And in case you weren't here last week, listen, the off times in our lives, that's when our lives get out of sorts as we become unbalanced in the things of God. And listen, the Bible says that Jesus was full of grace and truth, right? He was balanced. And listen, all the things that he did, he was balanced in all. And listen, when we go one end or the other and we get out of balance, that's when we begin to spiral downward. Epaphroditus was a balanced Christian, but there were some other things about Epaphroditus that helped him to have the submissive mind and to be able to serve God and to serve Paul and to serve the church. And listen, all these things brought joy to this man Epaphroditus. Not only that, can I just remind you, while he was doing all these things, he got sick. And Paul's own testimony, he was nigh unto what? Death. So sick, he's about to die. 
Listen, how many times do something like that happens to us? Listen, financially we become sick, or physically we become sick, or listen, emotionally we become sick, or something happens in our lives and we're nigh unto death and we cry out to God and say, oh God, why? It's not fair. You ever been there? It don't make sense. You ever made this statement to God? After all I've tried to do for you. Well, hold on. As everything you do for God, God never said you would never go through struggles. Not one time. But he did say, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You don't have to go through the struggles alone. So here this man Epaphroditus, he leaves Philippi, he goes all the way to Rome, somehow, somewhere he gets sick. I don't know what illness he had, but he's about to die. Here he is, he's supposed to be serving Paul, he's supposed to be ministering to the man of God that started their church. He was sent on behalf, can you imagine his heart? What if I can't fulfill these obligations? What if Paul needs something and I can't do what I was sitting here for? The whole church is trusting me and, and now I'm laying up here, maybe laying in bed, Stuck, can't move, can't do this, can't do that. And yet, something tells me he had joy. He had joy. What were some things about Epaphroditus? One, he was, we noticed he was balanced. Number two, uh, we talked, didn't talk about this last week. We get to the new part. Epaphroditus also lived a burdened life. He said, wait, that doesn't sound like joy. Last time I checked burdens, those are sorrowful. It depends what your burdens are. Depends what you, you say, what are you talking about? Well, I want you to notice here. Hey, listen, Epaphroditus, one of his burdens was to care for the Apostle Paul. Amen. Isn't that what he was sent there to do? He longed after you all, the scripture says. Listen, he, he, or I'm jumping ahead of myself. Look, verse 25. He, he's a companion, companion in, in labor, fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to what? My, not his needs. Have you noticed that? He wasn't there to give Paul food and water. Paul, he didn't ask Paul, what do you need? He said, Paul, what do you want? By the way, just, just so you're aware, sometimes we get upset with God because he hasn't provided what we wanted, but he never promised to provide all your wants. He provi promised to provide all your needs. needs right? Amen. Sometimes you think you want something and God says you don't need that. And so when his answer is no, his answer is right. And so here's Epaphroditus. He's going to this man of God to supply his wants. His burden was the man of God. His burden was to care for the wants. His burden wasn't, listen, Paul, what do you need? Oh, I, I need some aspirin. I've got a terrible headache. Okay, I'll get you. No, no, Paul, what do you need? Boy, I sure would like a chili dog. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe not. Well, as much as I get indigestion, chili dog, that don't sound any good. But you never know. Hey, what if, listen, Paul just sat there and listened. I, I, boy, I, I wish I could. And by the way, if you understand the heart of Paul the Apostle, I almost see him this. Boy, you know what? What I want to do is I want to be able to get this note to that guy Around, if you follow, the, and he tells them almost a map to get to the, some individual back in some back corner. I tried to talk to them about the gospel, and they shoved me off. Hey, can you, can you send this little note to him? Yeah, Remember, Paul's in house arrest. Paphrodite is running around. Yeah, I can do that. Here he is. <laughs> yep. Can you see it? Yeah, man. Hey, Paul says he'd like to talk to you Tuesday, 3 o'clock. You busy? <laughs> right? Can you almost imagine? Paul wanted some things, and here's this man. He's, he's providing the wants of Paul. Paul is his burden. Listen, that burden brought him joy. He lived a life, well, listen, uh, of burdens, and his burden was put in the right place. And when, Can you imagine when Paul asked for something and Epaphroditus was able to do that very thing? Imagine when that smile came across Paul's face, what it did for Epaphroditus. So what does that do with me? It, it, one of the greatest areas of ministry that I, aside from pastoring, that I've ever seen where you could carry the burdens of others is the bus ministry. Unless you've been in the bus ministry, listen, you, you, all, all, all you see is the outside. 
But I'm talking about when you've been in the houses of these kids. Not, not just you've handed them a church track or you've handed them a flyer, but you've, listen, you've invested in them. You've cared for them. You, you've gone by week after week after week. Listen, you've, you've met grandma because you showed up one day when the birthday party was there and you're able to witness to the grandma. Hey, listen, you met the stepdad. Hey, hey, you met the real dad. Hey, you met everybody in the family. Hey, you, you met this person and that person and Aunt Susie and Uncle Johnny was there. Hey, you, you, you've been there. Hey, you were there when mom and dad, neither one were there and the kids were left to fend for themselves and the old oldest one was five years old. I'm talking about, listen, when you have been there and there's that little boy or that little girl and listen, many times in, in the bus ministry, just the way it, it works, hey, you will invest in some child who they literally grow up thinking nobody cares about me. If I was here or if I wasn't here, nobody would even know. And listen, you carry their burden Oh, yes, it's hours. Oh, yes, it's work. Oh, yes, it's toil. Oh, yes, it's day after day and week after week. Oh, yes, there's times when, listen, uh, th th they don't even care what you've done for them They don't because they, don't, they don't know. They don't understand. Oh, yes, there's times when, listen, uh, it seems like th it's, it's never, it, the, the ministry never gives back. But when you realize what you're there for and you carry that burden, when you see that little boy or that little girl come to know Jesus Christ, when you see them walk down the aisle one day and they get in the baptistry boy I, how, how many of you, you maybe you've seen videos I've seen it in real life where a little boy listen he's getting baptized and he starts walking down the baptistry and instead of just taking one step at a time he dives in <laughs> that's all he knows I've seen the preacher uh -uh, don't don't because he saw the body language before he starts coming down the step I, 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 don't walk Listen, if, if you've never carried that kind of burden, it's hard for you to understand. But listen, one of the most joyous times in ministry is the times when I've seen those boys and girls come to Christ. I've seen them sit in church. I've seen them learn and see them grow. You start seeing them, instead of singing the songs of the world, they're singing about Jesus Christ. One of the most blessed times. She wasn't on my bus route, but she came on a bus route. She was in our children's church. We, we led the teenage children's church. We'd have 80 to 120 teenagers on the buses, junior high and high school. And there they are, learning about the Lord. We had a, a promotion where they had Bible books and they'd go to the store and they earned these throughout the week because they had uh, backyard Bible clubs back in, in, their home, in their homes, like a VBS almost. It was scheduled that there was going to be, a, we had about 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes allotment where I had to stop, dismiss, escort everybody down to the Bible Buck store. They came back, and boy, if you've ever heard 80 Walmart bags rustling underneath chairs while you're trying to preach, what a joy. Bless you. The Walmart bags were much worse, trust me. Right over this area, about where Miss Dottie sitting, there was a young lady that was sitting about that, that distance from the center of the room, and everybody got up and left except for her. I began to feel bad. I thought she didn't have any Bible books. She must live in a neighborhood. They didn't have a backyard Bible club, so she didn't get anything. I had some extras just in case. I said, did you not have any Bible books? She said, no. I said, well, here, you know what? You don't have to not participate. Let me give you some. She said, no. No. She said, no. Nah, I, I could have got some. I didn't want any. Why not? What's wrong? She said, she looked me square in my eye. And Brother Forrest, this is what she said. I think it's just a privilege to be in church. Man, talk about melt. Can you imagine investing in a, a young person like that? And God gets a hold of their heart in such a way where they just say, it's just a privilege to be here. All of a sudden, that burden is not a burden. I'll never forget that day. Epaphroditus had a life of burdens. And my friend, listen, when you learn to put your burdens in the right place, those burdens become blessings. Amen. Epaphroditus didn't just care about the needs of Paul and the wants of Paul. He cared about the needs of those in his church. He cared about the needs. Listen, he was burdened with a responsibility from his church. 
he carried this love offering of the church, and he came to Paul, not on behalf of Epaphroditus. This wasn't something, hey, Paul, here's something I have for you. It's from me, from me to you with love. No, no, listen. It's on behalf of our entire church. He cared for the needs of those in his church. Listen, he, he, he became so ill ministering to Paul. He almost died in Rome, and yet he cared more about the fact that his church back home was going to hear that he was sick, and he was burdened with that because he was burdened with their desires. Notice what he says there. Verse 26, for he longed after who? You all. Now, I know most of us here, we're from Texas. You say, you all, what does that mean? That's y'all. He longed after y'all. What does that mean? He's got a burden for the people in his church. He longed to be there. He, and listen, he says, and was full of heaviness. That's a burden, isn't it? Full of heaviness. Why? Why were you so full of heaviness? Because that you had heard that he had been sick. He was so concerned with the needs of the church and the responsibility the church put upon him. This the fact that he got sick and knowing the word got back to the church that he was sick, it bothered him. What if they don't trust me? What if now they're all concerned about me and they're not concerned about Paul? The what, you ever have the what ifs kind of start going through your head? Yeah. And listen, it burdened him. Why? Because he was carrying the burdens of his church. You ever carry the load of folks in your church? Or you ever realize the ministry in your church, the things that you do, the burdens? You ever get burdened when you can't fulfill those obligations? This afternoon, came in to the church and walked in the door. So I walked in the door. I have allergy problems all the time, always sniffling, always sneezing. After the last surgery, there's actual times I can smell now. <laughs> it's a blessing. Walked in the door, and I can smell. It smelled clean. Someone had been in here vacuuming and mopping and sweeping. And... You ever been doing something like that? You think, who even? nobody even notices. Everybody comes in and throws their trash everywhere, and I mean, there's stuff all over the pews, and the kids, the kids run in and out, in and out, grass comes, and I mean, they get grass all the way up into the baptistry, and they're not even in the baptistry. How do they do that? <laughs> right? Throw you throw grass at it. You better not. <laughs> and listen, if you're not careful, I can't tell you the number of times that I've been in Bible college at the time, or when my kids were in Christian school, the Older three were in Christian school while we were in Arlington for a short time. And to pay for that, we set up all the classrooms for the Christian school after every Sunday. It would be 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning before I'd go home because we were vacuuming and moving chairs, setting up tables, converting a church into a school. What joy. And if you're not careful, after Sunday has been a big day, people have become, they've gone. Hey, listen, there, there could have been 50 people saved. It didn't matter. You're sitting there vacuuming, and you see a mess, and that burden. <laughs> They're supposed to be Christians! <laughs> Come on, you ever been there? <laughs> what is wrong with people? I hope their house isn't like this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Those words start going through your head, and you know what? Now you're burdened with the ministry. Instead of, burden, instead of carrying the burden of the ministry. You know what I mean? Instead of carrying the burden of the ministry. Hey, listen, I'm doing this because, you know what? There might be someone to walk down this little aisle right here and get saved. There might be a mom and dad one day walk down this aisle and, listen, because it was clean, they didn't walk in the front doors and go, ooh, yeah, I don't think we're going to this church. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, because it smelled clean, they felt, hey, the nursery was taken care of and there was a nursery worker there. Hey, listen, ladies, I, I've never, that's one thing I've never done in a church. I've never worked the nursery. I've stocked it with not supplies but kids. <laughs> 
I've never worked the nursery, but I have taken care of children. Obviously. Hey, listen, I've been there when those kids, and listen, you're in the church, and praise God now, hey, we got, a, we got a monitor in there, and they can hear what's going on, and by the way, by the way those that are in the nursery, I, I don't know who all's in the nursery, Miss Powell, you can probably tell me, but I know Olivia's in there right now, and anybody else? Just Olivia. You better be doing what's right in there, girl. <laughs> hey, if you mute the TV, I'll know, because you won't say anything about the service tonight. That monitor doesn't have a remote control, and I thought about blasting it all, you know, mount the thing all the way up to where the controls are up against the ceiling, and you can't change it. Yeah. I don't think I'll do that for you, but hey, listen, the fact that somebody's in the nursery, mama can come in and, and take her sweet, precious child and put that child in the nursery for someone to take care of them, for somebody to feed them, and somebody to change their diapers, and somebody to give them animal crackers or goldfish, right? Whatever. And listen, because they can do that, there might be a mama that comes in, and she's able to pay attention to the preaching of the Word of God, and God stir her heart, and she says, you know what? I've got to get saved, and she walks down this aisle, and listen, maybe it's not mama, but maybe there's somebody sitting back behind mama, and, and listen, because mama had the baby in the nursery, the baby wasn't sitting right there where the people behind them that came to the church for the very first time, they didn't pay attention to a word, all they did was watch the baby. Oh, hi, sweet. You said that doesn't happen in church. Oh, whatever. I've had kids in church. <laughs> I remember walking in the church with that, with that infant carrier, listen, the very, for the very first time. Listen, and everybody behind you, all they want to do is see that new baby. Ooh, look. And it's like, shh, shh, they're asleep. Leave them alone. It was those times that I sat all the way in the very back. I couldn't pay attention to anything. Too much up and down and this and that and all this going on. I have to sit in the front. If you haven't learned yet, I get distracted. <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Where was I? Oh, no. Hey, listen, and the, and the fact that, you know what? Maybe somebody who walked in the church for the very first time, and the fact that there is a nursery, they're able to pay attention. And they walk down this aisle, and their life has changed forever. Why? Because you were in the nursery. And who, who really cares about nursery workers? Ladies, those of you that serve in the nursery, you ever just kind of felt that way in the nursery? You look at the schedule and you go, oh, I got nursery tonight. Are you burdened with the ministry or do you carry the burden of the ministry? The fact that I can care for somebody else's child to turn somebody else's life around. You say, well, yeah, but everybody's here. They've been here. These folks are already saved. You don't know what somebody's going to hear in church tonight that might just save their marriage. Amen. It might save their future. Yep, that's right. Turn their life around. And because you were in the nursery. Yeah. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Epaphroditus was burdened with the needs of the church. Well, all I do around here is, oh, wait a minute, is? I don't care what the name of the job you do, you're carrying the burden of the church. Amen. Remember Jesus said, take upon my yoke. Because my yoke is light and easy. Wait a minute. What's a yoke? I'm not from the country. I'm from the city. I thought a yoke was just a Hispanic way to say yolk. It's what's in the middle of an egg. And if you cook it too much, it becomes hardened. And then your over easy egg is no longer over easy. And that's no good. But that's not a yoke. No yoking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I cracked myself up. That yoke, you put that on, and listen, that yoke is designed so a team can carry the load. As they put that on that animal, whether it be an oxen or whether it be a cattle in some countries or whether it be a horse or a mule, that's a burden upon them. But because they're carrying the yoke or the burden of the master, they perform the job duty, the responsibility, and eventually one day, hey, there's some fruit that comes up. Yep. Are you burdened with it or do you carry the burden of it? Where are you at tonight? 
Listen, if you're not careful, your Christian life, just, I mean, just attending church becomes a burden instead of a blessing. Here's Epaphroditus, and the church says, hey, we need someone to go. And Epaphroditus, I don't know how it all works, but I almost imagine him just, listen, volunteering. Hey, I will go. I'll carry the burden. And listen, he had a burden life, and he becomes ill, almost dies. And he, but he wants to see this job done on behalf of the church. He wants to be a blessing to Paul. He wants to be a blessing to the church. He wants to see the job done. What if they have to send somebody else on his behalf? What if the church became discouraged or disheartened? What if they said, well, we try to be a blessing. Look what God allowed to happen. What if somebody in the church, listen, because of what happened to him, they become discouraged and they quit trusting on God? In verse 29, listen, Paul would say, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. It, it, it may just seem that as the church heard about Epaphroditus getting ill, as they heard about him staying for so long, as maybe they heard about him not planning to report on, on their preacher's needs or maybe his wants as they had expected. Listen, somebody began to become critical of Epaphroditus and Paul would have to write to the church and say, receive him in the Lord with all gladness. Listen, I'm telling you, he was about to die. You you better be thankful that God spared his life. And listen, as he wrote to them, he says, indeed, he was sick in verse 27 unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Listen, I'm stuck here. I'm incarcerated. There's nothing I can do. You send someone to be a blessing to me. He almost dies. And if he would have died, my heart would have been broken more. Yeah. And Epaphroditus is carrying this burden. And I just remind you, it was the man's burdens that kept him going for the cause of Christ. Because he was concerned about the burden. Because he had the burden of the, uh, of the preacher. Because he had the burden of the church. Listen, it kept him going. Look with me in the book of Hebrews. In chapter 11. Excuse me, chapter 12, typo. Hebrews chapter 12. Re begin reading with me in verse 1. And wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. You ever just have something slow you down in your Christian life? Notice, as I believe Paul wrote this, Notice as he's describing this eternal events, if you will. Hey, we've got a cloud of witnesses that are watching us. And he says, let us lay aside every weight. You know, there's some things that are in our lives that maybe God didn't say was sin, but it's not necessary. And it's going to slow you down. You ever been slowed down in your walk for Christ? You ever been slowed down? Oh, yeah. The Lord says, lay aside those weights. And... Here's what most of the time slows us down, the sin. Amen. You ever have sin come into your life, and because of this sin, it begins to hinder your walk for God? I remember as a teenager, got saved, got into church, and I heard a preacher preach against certain types of music. He said the music we ought to listen to ought to honor God. Not just the music in the church, but the music in your personal life. And he would, listen, he would give me some principles to live by, to choose the music that I live by. And, and I, I remember as I sat there, listen, God began stirring my heart. And, and, and listen, I, I didn't grow up in church. I, this, this stuff was all foreign to me. First time I heard the preacher say something about that, Brother Seifer, I thought, man, that guy's nuts if he thinks I'm going to get rid of my music. There's nothing wrong with my music. Music, I, that's not bad. You ever remember back in the day when CDs and cassette tapes used to have lyrics inside there so you could actually know what they were saying? I began to sit down and read some of them. And the Holy Spirit would say, it's not bad. Hmm? And I'd say, what does that mean? I began to think about some of those words and go, hmm, the Holy Spirit going, it's not bad? By the way, he was kind of sarcastic. He wasn't agreeing with me. And I felt that tug. Hmm. Well, maybe I just won't listen to that song. Then I began to think about music and be learning a little bit more about music and how music affects you, how it affects you physically, how it affects you spiritually, how it affects you mentally. 
And the Holy Spirit of God began to work on my heart saying, You're, you shouldn't be listening to that. I had, anybody remember a company, I don't know, they may still be around, I don't know, I don't, I don't adhere to it, I don't pay attention to them anymore. But there was a company back in the late 90s, mid 90s, called Columbia House. <laughs> They'd send you this thing in the mail and you take these little stamps and you lick them and you put them on that paper and you get 12 CDs for a penny. You might remember those days? Yeah. My dad, I got this thing, he, he got this thing in the mail, and it had to have been for him because I was underage, so there's no way I could be held to any contract, right? But my dad looked at it, and he goes, I don't listen to this junk. He goes, this must be for you, and he gives it to me. Man, I had just signed up for Columbia House. I had just got this package in the mail. I had my first CD player. We went to the pawn shop and bought my first CD stereo. And I mean, I was, I'd crank, mom and dad weren't home, you know, crank that thing up. And you could hear it downstairs. And I'd put my CDs in there. Man, for the first time ever, I was finally one of the cool teenagers in my own mind. <laughs> yeah. Then I get saved and I go to church and I start hearing these things and I start thinking, uh, wait a minute. Really? And as I begin hearing these things and hearing these words and listen, the Holy Spirit of God said, you need to get rid of that stuff. And I would take a whole case of CDs and I'd go to my youth pastor and he, he had taught, listen, if, if you want to get rid of that music that you're listening to, Tina, listen, you bring it to me and I'll replace it with something. And I said, I've got to get rid of this stuff. And listen, the Holy Spirit of God tear my heart up. And Brother Tim, I took these to my youth pastor and I handed it to him. We had, uh, this is something that, listen, foreign today. I don't think I've ever heard anybody doing it. And it used to happen a lot back in churches. They used to have old-fashioned record burnings. And then it became cassette tape burnings. CDs we didn't burn, we just snapped them. Brother Forrest, I remember as a teenager taking these CDs and snapping them in tooth, praying that my hand wouldn't get cut as I did them. But I remember, listen, some of them, Megan as a teenager, I just got saved, been in church for months. There's a young lady probably about your age, grew up in church. She walked up to me, tears in her eyes. And I said, wow. And she said, you're not going to get rid of that one, are you? I thought tears were in her eyes because God was moving upon her heart that somebody was joining in. Somebody from the outside was saying, you know what, this is, this is right, let's do this. But she was, she was crying, Isaiah, because I was going to break a CD yep. of some ungodly music. Yeah, I could tell you which CD it was, but I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you don't have to break it. I, I'll take that one. I said, no. Nah. And you know how stubborn I am. Yeah. Well, Travis, I looked her square in the eye, and I took that thing and went, hmm. <laughs> Put two pieces together, and I handed it to her so you can have it now. She didn't talk to me as much anymore. <laughs> it wasn't my wife, by the way. <laughs> she, she still talked to me. That's how we got married. Lay aside the sin. Listen, you said, what does all that have to do with this? Listen, there were some teenagers in that youth group that grew up in church, that had been to church camp, that had been to the vacation Bible schools, that had, listen, knew all the books of the Bible forward and backwards, and it was the sin, listen, the very sin that I got rid of, they never got victory over, and they, it consumed them. And some of those same teenagers to this day, listen, at my age, they don't even walk in the doors of church. He said, oh, come on, you think it was just the music? Hey, you live on the level of the music you listen to. Mark it down. By the way, parents, I'd be careful. I'd pay attention to what kind of music your kids listen to. You watch their music and their friends. By the way, you know some of the areas of life when you begin preaching against that people get really upset about? You talk about how to raise your kids. You talk about their finances. You talk about what they dress. And you talk about their music. That's a good way to ruffle up the feathers of anybody whose heart's not right with God. So by the way, if, you're, if your feathers are a little ruffled right now, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Just let me know, and I'll prepare a sermon just for you. <laughs> 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 
Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And then look what he said in verse 2. See, you thought I lost my place. No, I'll just make an application, an illustration to the truth that God gives us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus. See, we, we got this picture right here that, listen, as we're running this race, hey, we're getting rid of the weight that's slowing us down. Oh, that's slowing me down. i got to set that aside so I can run faster, right? And we got the idea that we're looking to Jesus. There's our goal line is Jesus. Well, yes, but I want you to notice what he says. Looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who? Who? For the joy that was set before him. It's not just that Paul's saying we're to be running towards Jesus. He's giving us an illustration of one who did this. Who for the joy that was set before him, look what he did. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know what Jesus did? Hey, when he knelt to the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, Lord, if there be any other way, would you remove this cup from me? You remember that? Burdened. But his burden kept him going. He was burdened with the necessity to pay for the sins that you and I would commit. The only way you would ever go to heaven is if he would pay for your sins. You go back and read John 17 in his prayer as he prayed for the disciples and as he prayed for those who would one day believe the words of the disciples would say. The words of the disciples would say, that's the word of God. That's the New Testament, right? Yep. Anybody believe the words of the New Testament? Anybody taken the word of God and trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and because of Jesus Christ and because those men were faithful and wrote those words down? Listen, we had the opportunity to be saved. And Jesus would pray for those that would one day trust the words of these apostles, if you will. He would pray for you. What does that mean? You were upon his mind. Amen. The burden he carried kept him going. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine Amen. be done. Hey, I'll just be honest with you. If you haven't learned yet, sometimes the ministry is rough. You're going to get hurt. But you have to realize what the burdens you're carrying are. Amen. In my mind, as I've been pastoring here in Sanger for six years, as Victory Baptist Church has been here for five years, when it becomes the hard days, you know what I do? I begin to remind myself of the joy that was set before me. Amen. Good. So what do you mean? I literally, at times, I go through the, the, you normally sit in the same places, normally, until all of a sudden we, we get, somebody comes in and then obviously you lose your seat. The Vitos used to sit up front and they lost their seat and then they used to sit over here and now they sit back there and sometimes they have to sit back there. And, but other than that, most people sit in about the same spot. When you have a large family, it's that way. It takes one person and messes up everything, you know. <laughs> Isaiah sits back there and kids, we can't sit there. Now we got to find, here's a whole pew right here that's empty and, and, uh. I go through the auditorium and I begin to think of places where I've led people to Christ. Sitting right here. Sitting right back there. Sitting right back there. Sitting right back here. Multiple times back here when my office was back here. You remember that? You haven't forgot that, have you? No. Now back there, Jesus Christ paid for all your sins, didn't he? Every one of them. And you know what? When times become rough for me, you know one of the things I do, Audrey? I remember times when you and others would trust Christ as Savior. And for the joy that's set before me, when I'm tired, when I'm exhausted, hey, listen, some of you haggle me, you need to do this, you need to take time off, you need to, hey, relax a little bit, hey, you need to, hey, just let, you know what? Monday, Brother Tim, you said, hey, listen, God took a day off too. He showed up here to the church, and he's like, what are you doing here? And listen, for the joy that's set before me, that's what's got to keep you going. It's got to keep you going. Listen, carrying those burdens, it's actually the joy that we get to carry these burdens. Listen, you're teaching a Sunday school class and you look at those kids in the eyes and I know sometimes they don't listen. Miss Brenda, I've taught the little three-year-olds and oh my soul, I'm surprised I had hair back then. <laughs> By the way, hey, at the beginning of the year, Miss Brenda's hair wasn't great. Look what you kids have done to her. 
I had one three-year-old boy one time. His grandma dropped him off. And listen, he wasn't raised in church <laughs> all those three years, you know. And uh, his grandma dropped him off. Mom and dad didn't go to church. And this little boy, when mama or grandma dropped him off, all he did was go to the door. And listen, he stood right there at the door. My door was over in this corner. I taught over there. And he would stand right there. And in the whole Sunday school hour, kick the door. <laughs> and I'd pick him up and bring him over to the seat. And hey, you need to sit down. And he'd get right back up and go over there and kick the door. And it's like, oh, my soul. And okay, kids, we're going to quit listening to him. He'll quit eventually. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> Grandma finally came and said, how do you do? He he'll learn. You say, what do you do in those situations for the joy that's set before you? If I told Grandma, listen, he's never going to learn. He's never going to listen. He'll, he drives all of us nuts. And you need to just keep this kid out of here. If I told Grandma that, what do you think the chances of her coming next week is going to be? How many parents, listen, because their kids acted up in class. And by the way, I'm not saying Sunday school teachers never talk to parents. My kids act up. You let me know. Where's he at? <laughs> You let me know. Yeah, right this way. Yeah. There's an altar right there. Hey, don't look to the door. the door. We didn't pray to be dismissed. My kids act up. You let me know. Why? Because they, our kids are raised in church. They know better. Well, what about those kids that are not? Listen, sometimes you've got to work with them. Wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. Right? You've got to use wisdom, discernment. You gotta know what to, what to do. Now it can either be a burden or it can be a blessing. Epaphroditus, here's this man. He was balanced. Balanced in his Christian life. He was burdened. And let me conclude and say this. He was also lifted up by the Lord. He was lifted up by the Lord. Go back to Philippians chapter 2. He said, I don't even know much about this guy. I, I mean, what did he do exactly? Uh, how did he live his life? I don't know, but I know, all the, I know this. Paul said in verse 29, Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in... What? He's saying, hey, lift him up. Hold him in high esteem. Because for the work of Christ, look at that. For the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. He will, probably wouldn't have almost lost his life if he had not been serving the Lord. And for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life. He wasn't worried about what was going to happen to him. But you know what? To supply your lack of service towards me. Hey, listen, his only desire was the burden. And listen, because he lived his life that way, Paul would say of him, receive him, listen, with gladness, hold him in reputation. And can I just remind you what Jesus said in Matthew 23, 12? He said, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be I'll be exalted. See, the world's mentality is you just, hey, you go ahead and make a name for yourself. By the way, in ministry, a lot of preachers have the same mentality. You got to do this to make a name for yourself so that way people listen to you. Get the God, you can preach to thousands. Hey, listen, that is not at all what the Lord said to do. He said, if you're going to exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. That word abased, hey, listen, you're going to be cut down. But if you'll humble yourself, God will lift you up. You say, well, nobody notices. If he notices, that's all I need. That's all I need. Epaphroditus. What a blessing this man was. As I close tonight, let me just say, he had a submissive mind. He submitted himself to the Lord. He submitted himself to the, to the church. He submitted himself to the needs of the man of God. And God has lifted him up. And for thousands of years, listen, over 2,000 or almost 2,000 years now, we have talked about this man named Epaphroditus. He's become a man we know about. For all I've done for the Lord, I don't find my name in the Bible. Hmm, 
Nobody will ever know. Wait a minute. He knows. He knows. Let me just say, you know what makes Victory Baptist Church so wonderful? There's a great group of people here just like Epaphroditus. Maybe nobody, even in your own church, knows what you're doing. God knows, doesn't he? And by the way, many of you, you do things behind the scenes nobody knows about. And listen, sometimes that's the greatest blessing, isn't it? Somebody looks and goes, well, look at that. And you know you're the one that did it. Nobody else knows. Can I just remind you that nobody knows who did that? <laughs> <laughs> we got a church with some great people Amen. wanting to serve God wanting to give their hearts to the Lord well, God just used me somewhere somehow it may be just small now but what happens when we get to the point where there are no pews you're something small that you're doing all of a sudden becomes something pretty big Miss Brenda five years ago you didn't have as much people to clean up after did you it was a little bit easier. It gets harder as more people come. But you know what? What a blessing. What a blessing to serve God. It brings joy to your heart having a submissive mind. And Paul would say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight. Just to be like Epaphroditus. God, to make sure our life is balanced. And Lord, to carry the proper burdens the proper way. Lord, a day like yesterday. Where for some reason, you would wake me up early. A few hours of sleep. Driving for six hours of the day spending hours in class with teenagers. And Lord, to some, it would be a burden they wouldn't want to carry. But to think, we have a church where we have teenagers. Teenagers that want to serve God. Teenagers that want to find your will. To think that I can help and assist with that. That you might use them in mighty ways as they grow. God, I thank you. If we're not careful, Lord, we're burdened with the fact that somebody needs help. Or that somebody needs counsel. Or that somebody needs time. And God, I pray you'd help us to remember the burden we're carrying is the work of Christ. We thank you for the work. We thank you for those that are here. We thank you for the opportunity to work for you and with you. And God, would you help us as a church to be submitted in our minds to you? And we know that if we'll do so, our joy will be full. Help us, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. As the piano plays tonight. <laughs>